In this video, we're going to be taking a look at using attributes in Houdini. Attributes are a unique property to Houdini. Um, they're really like the core power of the program. So to start off, I'm going to make a geometry node so we have something to put our attributes on. And we're going to go look at the help documentation and see what uh, Houdini side effects has to say about uh, attributes. So we're going to look for uh, geometry attributes. There we go. And if we read the definition here, uh, attributes are named values stored on vertices, points, primitives, and objects. Uh, point color, position, UV coordinates, spline weight, and normal are examples of stored point attributes. So, um, if we scroll down a little bit, we can see the different components of geometry that can have attributes associated to them. So attributes behave sort of like labels or data that's attached to the geometry. So they can act as tags to help Houdini perform certain tasks on them or treat them a certain way. Um, perhaps you want to delete only geometry that has certain attributes associated to it. Um, or maybe put certain geometry with attributes into certain groups. And so uh, we can add attributes to vertices or points. We can also add them to the primitive as a whole or to the details, uh, a detail which is the entire uh, node. So the, the output of that node, we can add a, an attribute to just that entire output. There would be one detail attribute where we could have separate and unique primitive point and vertex attributes for each instance of those. So um, attributes can be added or transferred amongst all of these different levels of a geometry component. To borrow an analogy from Ari Danish, Let's say I need to buy a sweater and I need a specific size. I can check the tag on that sweater and I can see that it'll have a label somewhere, uh, probably around the neck area. Well, that size label is a attribute of that sweater, or uh, in this case, we can see it as data attached to that geometry. So in the case of the size label, um, that is an inherent attribute, something that's already built into the geometry. Um, whereas the price tag that's on that sweater is another example of a customized attribute. That attribute uh, was attached to the sweater after it had already come to the store. So in Houdini, we have a similar setup. There's really two types of attributes. There's attributes that come default on the geometry, such as uh, point scale and point position. Uh, this is used for things like uh, generating noise with a mountain sop, for example. And there are custom attributes that we, uh, the users in Houdini, can create and add and transfer amongst existing geometry. So, once I buy the sweater, and I find the one that's in my size, and I take it home, and I'm going to wear it for the first time, I don't need the price tag anymore. So, I cut the price tag off. The price tag did its job, and it's no longer needed. Uh, this is something that's important to remember with using attributes in Houdini. Uh, we can add them, but we can also change them or transfer them or remove them altogether when we don't need them anymore. So let's get started in Houdini and take a look at how to use uh, attributes in a more basic sense. So to do that, um, let's go ahead out to the top here. And I actually happen to have I'll go import a, an FBX. And we'll go up. I actually happen to have a, a sweater that we can use for our example. All right. Uh, we have our sweater model here. And we'll see. I'll go ahead and unlock this. And with this sweater, it comes in uh, probably multiple sizes. So first off, let's go ahead and define the multiple sizes in our sweater. Uh, to do that, I'm just going to make a 
couple transform nodes. I'm going to call this one extra small. And we'll say the extra small sweater has a point scale, a uniform scale of 9. I'll say 0.8. And from there, let's go ahead and copy this. And this will be 0.85 for a small. 0.9 for our medium. And I'm going to really quickly do this for the other uh, sweater sizes that I would like. All right. So now I've got the extra small, small, medium, large, extra large, extra, extra large, and the 3XL shirt sizes. And I've just increased each of their uniform scales by 0 0.05. So now that I've got each one, I can create an attribute to tell Houdini um, which shirt size the my sweater is. So to do that, uh, to see that first, let's go ahead and I'm going to hit Alt and right brace to split my screen top and bottom. And then I'm going to change my um, scene view. Uh, I'm going to hit Alt 8 to change it to my geometry spreadsheet. Uh, another way that I can do this is by right clicking it and selecting geometry spreadsheet from this drop down menu. And we'll see uh, here we can see the attributes that we create for our geometry. So right here we have all of the points here listed for our geometry. As you see there's quite a number of points in this sweater. And this PX, PY, and PZ are the X, Y, and Z positions of each of those points in our geometry. Uh, this is the point attributes. This is the vertex attributes. Uh, their default attribute is the point number that the vertice is associated with. We have primitive attributes, which by default in Houdini we have nothing. And then uh, detail attributes, or the attributes that are encompassing the entire object all as uh, all together. So if we uh, middle mouse click over a node, we'll get our info pop up and we can see the points, primitives, vertices, polygons, but we can also see the attributes listed here. So here we have three point attributes that list the position of the points in our uh, geometry. So let's go ahead and add some more attributes so that Houdini can know what size our sweater is. So to do that, I'm going to type attribute create. And I'll drop that down, and we'll step down into that. And here, I can create uh, new attributes for Houdini. So you'll see over here in point, attribute 1 has shown up now in our uh, geometry spreadsheet as a point attribute. So um, in this, I, let's say I want to set this as a primitive attribute. So I can change its class type to detail, primitive, point, or vertex. In this case, I want primitive. And it will have disappeared from our point uh, section, and it will now be over in our primitive section. I'm going to go ahead and name this uh, attribute size. And instead of giving it a value, you'll notice they're all zero here, I could change this value to one and they'll all update to one or uh, I can keep updating it to any number that I want. But I could also choose the um, data type that my attribute represents. So in this case I'm going to say string and this is a, an extra small. So I'm going to say extra small. And now we'll see my size is listed as extra small. I'm just going to label that as size. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy this over. And this one is going to be small. That way I have a size attribute now named extra small or small. And I'm just going to do this just like I did for the transform across each one. Alright, so now I've created a size attribute 
for each of my corresponding uh, sweater sizes. And we'll see that as I change my selection through here, my size uh, attribute will update accordingly in my geometry spreadsheet. So now that I have that, uh, let's go ahead and make a switch so that we can uh, toggle through our sizes. So I'm just going to go ahead and add all of these up. And now I can toggle through the different sizes of our sweater. And we'll see that their attributes change. So uh, if we were going to do this in a store-like environment, uh, let's go ahead and create some more sweaters and then make sure that they have a different size. They are a different size and then thus a different size attribute for each uh, copy. So to do that, we can actually use the copy stamp node. Uh, so what we're going to do there is type copy stamp and stamps are unique types of attributes that we can use with the copy node so that we can give unique attributes and thus uh, have unique things happen to them for every copy that we make in our copy node. So we could just do this by default. Let's say I make 10 copies and I'll offset them by 35. If we go over to the stamp tab, I can check stamp inputs to turn this on. And I can start creating uh, new variables here. Uh, and so I'm going to call this variable sweater size. And then I'm going to write a short expression in its value. And to do that, I'm going to write uh, fit zero one. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and bring this up so it's a little bit bigger and easier to see. And then I'm gonna type rand. And then I'm gonna use the built-in variable dollar c y. And what this will do is generate a random number between zero and one based off of the uh, copy instance, which is what CY stands for. So because this is between 0 and 1, uh, the fit 0, 1 assumes a 0 to 1 range and then proportionately scales that value between a new min and max value that we define. So because we have six different or seven different shirt sizes, uh, we'll, sweater sizes, we'll need between 0 and 6. So it will scale a random number between 0 and 1 to 0 and 6. And I'll just hit apply. And we can see it hasn't done anything. And that's because we haven't told it to use this uh, sweater size variable. So if we go into our switch, I can actually uh, start writing a short expression to grab the sweater size variable from our copy node. And based on that variable for each copy, it will change which switch input we use. So I'm going to start typing uh, stamp. And we'll see a, I need a string followed by the string is the path. Then the second string is the name of our variable. And the float is the default value if it can't find our uh, string var stamp variable for whatever reason. And we'll grab our copy one. And then we're going to grab our sweater size variable and we'll just make our default zero. So now when I hit enter, you'll see that I now have random sweater sizes based off of our sweater size variable. And I can actually uh, change this. Uh, let's add a some more randomization in there. Um, it looks like we have some better better sizes in there. Um, I'm just changing my uh, random seed a little bit. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and add some color attributes to our sweaters. So 
we can go up here before our copy node and add a color SOP. And now in our copy, we'll go and add a CR, CG for color, and color B. And for the value for these, we're going to do a, another RAND and then base this off of the um, copy instance again. And I'll just multiply this by a random number. And we're actually going to need to fit this between a value of 0 and 1 because that is what our color range is. Um, if we go back up here to our copy, um, these can go greater than 1. But uh, zero to one scale will work. So I'm I, and I like fitting values. So that's what we will be doing. So I'll just do fit between zero and one for rand that and zero and one. And I'll copy that into there, into there, and I'm going to change this value so that we have a different seat. Uh, make sure we generate a different number for each one. And this will be 15. That'll work. All right. So now we can go into our color node. And we'll type stamp. And grab our copy path. And our first va value is uh, CR for red. And again, with the default will be 0. Now we'll see we get a little bit of color change, and I'm going ahead and copy this, and I'll just paste this into here, and this will be CG. And then in here, I'll paste that again, and this will be CB. All right, and so now, if we were to increase our uh, number of copies, we would get a new random sweater with one of our seven sizes and a random color with each new copy. And if we go ahead and take a look at our point attributes, we'll see that now each of our primitives has a new C, D, R, G, and B color attribute. All right, so now that we've got that, let's go and look at a way to see or uh, visualize these attributes. So I've manually change the size of each of our shirts. So if we go back to our primitive attributes, we can see it's actually listing each primitive number. If I turn primitive numbers on, it's listing each primitive number is aware of what size of the sweater that it is. Uh, so we'll see if we scan through here that the sweater size will change with our uh, primitive numbers. So to visualize this, uh, there's a couple ways we can do this. Um, for now, we're going to use the visualize node. And uh, let's go ahead and toggle this visualization on and off uh, to redo the render. And on the visualize node, we can go over to visualizers. And I'm going to call this size and lower and then label it size. And for type, we're going to choose marker. Um, and we'll see this is right now going to just display the uh, point index for each of our uh, points, which is a lot. So we can change this from our point class to a primitive class and we'll get nothing. Uh, because there is no attribute P in our primitive class. So what we were seeing here, if I change this back to point and attribute P, we're actually getting this X, Y, and Z output for each point on our sweaters. So it changes back to primitive, and I want our size attribute, so I can just type size. And now I'll see that I get, uh, if we zoom in, XS for extra small, large, extra large. We have uh, 2XL, uh, another small, some 2XLs, a medium, and so we can see the different sizes in our sweater. I'm going to make this font larger so it's a little easier to see. 
and I can change the visibility so that it always appears uh, when it is under my pointer. So I can hover over my shirts to see the visualization or uh, near my pointer and I can increase this range to get a bigger fall off like that. And I can change the text color that it appears as. Um, or I can just do on selection. So um, if I go ahead and actually just make a null node real quick and I hit enter in my viewport, I can uh, go and select my sweaters and see which size they are based off of my selection. That's pretty nifty. All right, so now that we can see what size our sweater is, uh, remember that uh, sweater price tag? Well, I need to know what price my sweater is. Um, I don't really have any options. Medium is the only size that I can wear, so it looks like I'm getting this guy over here, but I still care about the price, so I wanna know how much that cost. So uh, let's look at another way that we can assign uh, attributes to uh, geometry and primitives. So we're going to go, um, a, let's go after our copy. Um, and this can really be after our visualize as well. And here I'm going to start typing attribute, uh, if I can type, attribute wrangle. And here we can write um, a vex expression to uh, script a, the assignment of, create and script the assignment of a new variable. We're going to have this run over all of the points uh, and we're going to price, we're going to make the price vari uh, variable. So this is going to be a string. Um, eh, it can be an int. Let's do, let's do an int. And at sign for attribute and price. And we'll end that with a semicolon and go to the new line. So how do we want to price our sweaters? Um, I think for now we can price off of the color attribute that we assigned previous, uh, previously. So well, what we can do there is write an if statement to check the color attribute and based off of the condition that we set, the we can set the price accordingly. So we'll say if and then another at for c c d and then r to get the red channel of our color attribute and again we can see that if we go over here to our points uh, i've just broken it by looking at it but if we click on this null i can see c d r c d g and c d b so we're going to say that for all of the shirts or sweaters that have a red color, or more red color than green color. So more CDR than CDG. Then we're going to make our price attribute equal to uh, 15. So if we look here, um, our red and green are equal here on this primitive. But if I go down, eventually we'll see here we have a higher red value than our green value, so our price is now 15. So I'm going to do this for our a couple more so that we make sure that we get a price for each of our sweaters. And I'll do else if at cd in this case we'll say if we have more green then we do blue cd blue then we're going to set price equal to say 20 And then I'm just going to copy this 
and then we'll do more blue than red. And we'll make this like 55. And then, um, just in case, let's say we get like a completely gray shirt or if one attribute isn't necessarily higher than the others, we'll do else and at price equals uh, 33. That'll work. So, now, uh, what did I do wrong? Oh, I forgot my at symbols here. Let's add those real quick. All right, there we go. So now if we pan through here, we'll see my price attribute here is updating based off of my color. So um, we can uh, move, like I said earlier, we can transfer attributes. So we're gonna transfer this price attribute over to our primitive attribute list so that our size and price uh, can be displayed next to each other. So we're gonna do an attribute promote so that we can promote this uh, point class attribute to a primitive class attribute. And I'll just grab our price attribute here. And now we'll see that price has moved from a point to a primitive. And I'll go into attribute promote and uh, more because it has a it's really cool node. Um, we'll go into this node more in a later video. So now that I've got it promoted to a primitive attribute, let's look at another way that we can visualize uh, different attributes that we've created. So remember, if I go um, make a, another null node down here, and I hit enter in our scene, and I click, I can see the same visualization here for my, our shirt size, but I also want to see the shirt price. So I can hit D in our scene view and go over to visualizers, and then I can add a new scene visualizer. So in this case, we're gonna add another marker, and this is going to be price. It's a marker. Uh, we're going to make the class a primitive class, and the will display text, and the attribute will be price. And I'm going to again set this to only on selection, and I'll make it large. And we'll close that, and that. And now we'll see that as I click on it, my uh, price, we'll see a number is displayed here. And I'm getting two numbers, um, probably because the visualizer is set to display it based off of conditions from my uh, viewport and in my scene view. Uh, but it's not really a problem because I can still see the price of my shirt. So it looks like I'm getting a $20 uh, shirt, sweater. So now that I know that the sweater that I am getting is this medium, um, it's $20, so it's a green sweater. And I no longer need the price tag or any of these other sweaters. So we can actually go and uh, I'll just write a simple expression to blast away all of the sweaters that are now all of the sweaters, but all of the sweaters except for the medium sweaters that I want. Uh, we can go into our group setting and we could do this to create new groups or um, just straight up uh, filter out a new group based off of our attribute settings. So we'll say at size equal to or equivalent to medium. I'll see it's deleted. Um, in this case, it's blasted away all of our medium shirts, which is just one. And I'll just say delete non-selected, and I've got my medium shirt left right there. And it, obviously, this would keep any other medium shirts that I had as well. Um, so I could select between these uh, price uh, and go shopping for medium shirts. So now that I've got that, um, I got my medium shirt. I've bought it and taken it home, and now I need to get rid of the price tag. So we're going to cut that price tag attribute off. So now 
I can just do attribute delete. And then we'll go and just here we can select all of the point attributes or vertex primitive or detail attributes that we wish to delete. So I'll go into the primitive attribute selection and we'll delete our price attribute. And now we'll see that our price column in our attribute spread geometry spreadsheet has gone and I can middle mouse click and I get only my shirt size displaying. And again, uh, my price visualizer is still here, but there is no price attribute for it to display. So I can go ahead and then just delete that visualizer. All right. Uh, that was a good shopping trip. So now uh, in the next video, we're going to go over more uh, useful and creative ways to use attributes in our Houdini networks.